And he's stumbling, slurring his words. He's like, oh, Americans, da 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 da. And he's like running towards me, bro. I feel him like on some get out shit. He's like running, bro. And I feel him and he swings on me. Damn. And I duck and I get up and I push him away. And I'm like, what are you doing, bro? And he's like, fuck you, American. Oh. I'm like, well, first of all, like I'm Mexican American. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, <laughs> how do you know how you know that I'm, I'm American? Like, I'm all right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the podcast today. I got some very exciting guests. You guys, you realize I haven't seen you guys since you guys had a gun held up to my head and on my block, right? <laughs> <laughs> the last time I saw you guys, I was getting robbed and one of you guys pistol whipped my woman. I don't remember which one it was. It's been a minute. <laughs> it was you. <laughs> anyway, I'm here with the amazing actor Ezekiel, Gilberto, and Herbert. You guys, how are you guys doing today? Good, brother. Bless. Good, how are you? Good. Bless, thank you for bro, having for real. us. Of thank course. I know. I, live, I know. Corona is kind of a mission, so thank you guys for coming out. L.A. You know, it's a, it's like a what one hour, two hour drive. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm expecting the check in the mail, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Heck yeah. Well, yeah. No, going based off that, I want to start off with your guys' stories. Like, where did you guys grow up? Uh, were you guys born in L.A.? Were you guys? I know you have a very interesting story. You were you were born in Mexico, right? Yeah. In city of Mexico, correct? Guerrero in Ayutla Los Libres. How was that, bro? I mean, I don't remember, bro. I was brought here <laughs> when I was one, but yeah, they just came over here and they needed a better life. So I was born and then I was brought over here. My dad came first, so I didn't see my dad for a minute, but I don't remember. But um, so the United States is like all you know, for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So it was like they told me I was an immigrant, but I was like, what are you talking about? Like I didn't know. Okay. That I was born in Mexico, either like I've never seen it, so, mm. and, and that program is called the the D A C A, right? The yeah, DACA. Uh, DACA. Okay. Yeah, and uh, that's allowed me to like act, yeah. get work, get a social security, like protection from you know getting deported and whatnot or anything crazy. Like, I was raised in Watts all my life, so just came up there, grew up in the hood, and you know next to the projects, next to the Watts Towers, it's been like a crazy environment but real blessed to like come from there and like learning a lot from there mm -hmm. yeah bro Gilberto what about was, yourself were you born in LA I was born in Ventura County so like Newbury and raised in Newbury Park oh, okay. like the Thousand Oaks area nice. um but yeah I was just born out there and once I uh got older and stuff like that and I decided to pursue an acting career like once I was 18 um I decided to try to get an agent and stuff but um, but yeah, no. But now I live in LA, mm. and um, that's pretty chill. <laughs> I really. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Herbert? You, I know you're not, you're not in LA. No, I was actually born in LA. I was born. Oh, in East, okay. Yeah, I was born in East LA at the White Memorial Hospital out there, East LA, and then I was born, I was raised until I was ten in Norwalk. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So close to like, you know, thirty minutes away from from LA, and then after that, when I was ten, <clears throat> my family and I moved to Victorville to the high desert. Yeah, bro. So yeah, so you're like me, dude. Every time I tell people that I live out in Corona, they don't even like, know where that's at. They're like, "Where the hell? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You've got Corona." I'm like, "No, yeah. no tengo coronavirus." Yeah, bro. <laughs> I'm, I'm from Corona. Yeah, I know. But, I, I always see on your Instagram story, you're always outdoors. You're always like in the mountains working out. Yeah, How has that been? Being away from Los Angeles, but still having to work in that sort of, uh, I guess you can call it that field, right? Yeah, the entertainment bro. industry and all that. Being I love it. I love it, bro. It's a blessing because. At the same time, you know, you're not just stuck in like the whole acting world, the whole like L.A. world. You know, yeah. you, I get to get out and, you know, my family and I, we have property out there. So mm -hmm. I go out there at the ranch, bro, just go hiking. I love just to be outdoors, not just out there, but like at the beach or like, you know, anywhere outdoors where I can be. That's like my my comfort zone. That's like my, my safe space. So I, I like that. And it's nice because you get to like. You get to go to LA and that's sort of like your playground. Yeah. You know, that's sort of like where we go to play, where we go to play make believe, right? For our yeah. jobs. And then you get to escape that. So there's always yeah. that distance. And that's what I love about California, bro. You can yeah. be an hour, hour and a half away from LA, but you're still in the mix wherever you are. You know, if you want to go to the mountains, you can go you can desert, beach, wherever, but you're still in the mix of everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how, how did you guys get involved into acting? I mean, we'll start with, with Z over here. How did you, how did you dive into you know to thinking to yourself i want to i want to become an actor this is what i want to do this is what i want to pursue i mean i never wanted to be an actor it kind of just like happened for me um you know when you're a kid and you get thrown into the pool to learn how to swim it's just yeah. kind of like that but i was uh my little brother went to school with the kid shout out nathan um who got on a disney channel show and he got into a program called actors giving back 
we signed up my little brother because um, my dad's like, just try it out. Maybe you can make some money off this. And then um, the day we dropped him off, he uh, there was like an open spot and the school director asked me if I wanted to take the spot. And I was like, looking at my mom, I was like, nah, I'm good. Like, I never wanted to be an actor. It was kind of like cringe a little bit. And then <laughs> they, uh, they offered me the spot. So I took it and then I got some agents and then... I just started like studying and like learning about the craft and whatnot and, you know, going to traditional acting schools and learning. And then it became my passion. I was going to say, I, I know when we were speaking on a, on the set of OMB and we'll get to that. Uh, I think I remember you saying that you were taking classes uh, with Shia LaBeouf, right? Shia LaBeouf has an acting school in, uh, in was it East Los Angeles? No, in South LA. South and, LA. Yeah, okay. yeah. But, uh, so how was that? I mean, you, you've trained with some pretty like, you know remarkable people and, and you know some people who definitely have made an impact in cinema how's that been on you i mean it's been cool because like in the beginning i was like trying to find out the actor that i was like some actors are like you know disney channel actors comedic duh, 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 and like i just needed to find my like rhythm with what i do and being at sloss and rec like taught me a lot and like shia taught me a lot you know people like bobby soto from tax collector taught, taught me a lot they like taught me a different way with like acting and the artistry behind it. Um, and I've been real blessed to like learn from them, you know, shout out to Ed Harris too, that took me under his wing. Um, like this is a craft, you know, it's an art piece. It's just, you're carving your marble over time. And uh, acting has just changed my life, saved my life and I absolutely love it now, you know? It's like a true blessing. That's awesome, man. I love hearing that. How about you, Gilberto? Well, I always enjoyed the idea of acting since I was like about nine or 10. And I did, um, I got like an acting, like I went into an acting school when I was like in middle school and I just kind of did that. Then I just didn't do anything about it. I just went to high school. And then once I graduated from high school, I, um, I called CAA and I was like, oh, <laughs> I, called, well, awesome. I was like, oh, That's like, sick. what do I have to do to like be a client or you know, whatever? <laughs> and the girl on the phone was really straight sweet. Yeah, straight I was like, well, I just talked like, straight for the big leagues. <laughs> I like, well, I Googled like, oh, like, oh, talent agencies in Los Angeles. And um, but yeah, the lady on the phone, she was really sweet. She was like, oh, um, unfortunately, we have to ask you to be represented by us. And then I looked at their roster and I was like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it makes sense uh no like, but yeah uh, so ask me yeah <laughs> i don't know for real like uh while well, i'm here um no and my uh my seventh grade english teacher was an actor and she had shown me her demo reel and i like became like in love with her because i was like dude like how did you do it you know because i didn't you know i don't have access to anybody in the business and um but yeah, and she told me her agency i called them up after caa Cause I remembered about her agency and they, uh, yeah, they said that they were having open, uh, open calls like on a Thursday, like two weeks from then. And so I was like, Hey, like, fuck it. Why not? Like I told my dad, let's, let's go. And, uh, I looked out and they ended up signing me and just kind of slowly, but I didn't have any headshots. Like I did some theater, but I didn't have any like proper, you know, like training, training or anything like that. Um, so I kind of just was, yeah, it took a little, like, took like a year or so to kind of start going out on auditions and it's learning how to audition because yeah. 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 I didn't, yeah. like, no, I didn't. When we first start off, we're all, like, super green. Yeah. They throw you in there. You don't know where to look, what to do. I mean, it's it's like throwing a, a deer just straight into headlights. For real. Yeah. Even down to, like, you're not, you can't even, like, shake hands or something. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. there's a whole protocol. Like, they're, like, get to your one, you're, like. What? what do you mean like, what's, that? <laughs> what's that so what now like what do you want me to do? yeah it's it was um a really awkward phase of me oh, just like shit. figuring out like and then the difference between like commercial auditions and theatrical and the different types of pro you know it was like i took classes and i'm i still take classes and just slowly but surely things just started unraveling and I look back at some like old self tapes from like f when I first started when self tapes weren't really a thing for me and I cringe. I'm like, <laughs> dude, that was so bad. I'm like, why did I think that that was such a great choice? Like, but, but you know, you live and learn and some things just it's aren't meant for it's you. It's a learning process. Yeah, too. definitely. You have to get through the pile of garbage to like get through the, to get through the, to the pile of like, yo, I think this is actually kind of good. I feel like I got a grasp on my craft now. Now let me create something that, I'm proud of. Yeah. Yeah. I, we, were, we were all there. I'm, shit, I'm still there. No, there's <laughs> something. I mean? I'll watch a take and I'm like, 
Damn, yeah. I did that. Bro, That's the only thing. You never stop learning. That's the thing. Like, yeah. Bro, no. Yeah. No, I'm always like, I mean, I learn from all of you guys. Like any any anything I get the opportunity to join, I'm like learning from crew, the actors. Like, you know, there's just such an opportunity to learn and to grow, not only artistically, but on like a human level yeah. too. And getting to like meet so many different people from so many like different walks of life. I think that's like so f cool and so fascinating. Like, how the hell did you get here? Like, how, you know, like what's, your, yeah. Yeah. What about you, Ever? Yeah, I started in high school, bro. Like, I saw one of my friends uh, out in Victorville, bro. Like, I saw her like on iCarly and like all these Nickelodeon shows as an extra, but I didn't know what that was. And in high school, I was just focused on hooping, on basketball and school. And uh, so one day I was watching iCarly and I was like, did I just see you on last night's episode? I was like, what, what were you doing? And she's like, oh, so like my mom takes me out there she, to, to be an extra. And like, you know, I do my homework and then like in between uh, takes and like on lunch and, you know, we just shoot and it's cool. And I'm like, oh, I want to do that. So I told my mom, I was like, mom, I want to do that, blah, blah. She was like, Man, get out of here. She's like, I'm not, I'm not taking you to school to basketball practice, yeah. picking you up from that, taking you to games, to tournaments, and, and they making still you going to LA, store, yeah. bro, hour and a half. So I was like, all right, cool. And then, uh, so then I went to college, and then after that, you know, I soon realized like it wasn't for me. So, so, you know, I dipped, and then after that, I just started getting, you know, regular jobs, you know, working just, you know, construction jobs, uh, warehouse jobs. You know, I worked at Tilly's at the mall, I worked at the airport, you know, at the like air base camps and stuff for for the military. And um, I was just trying to, you know, find myself and, 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 and work my way through that, as we all do, you know, just try to find ourselves. And then one day, like on Snapchat, I don't know if you guys remember that, where you can put like different filters on your face. And I would just do like different accents and just like just just mess around. And I sent that to my pops. I sent that to my dad. And he was like, he's like, I don't know, but you have something there. He was like, he's like, you ever try it? Like, like, why don't you just try acting? Me and her were watching the movie Transformers, actually. And he was like, why don't you just try acting? I was like, oh, I didn't know you could try acting. I thought like you had to have somebody like in your family in the entertainment industry. He's like, just try. He's like, just open up your laptop and just look up acting classes. So I did, bro. I looked up like voiceover classes because that's always been my dream to voice a character for like Disney, DreamWorks, Pixar. So I was like, let me start that way. I did those classes and then I just started taking traditional classes. I got involved with my friend Diamond, who's actually from Victorville as well, who's like done a bunch of big stuff in, in L.A., he was like, bro, just come with me, just like shadow me as like as a director. You can be like a key grip. You can do, you know, work with the gaffers. You can do all that. So I learned behind the scenes while looking at the actors. So when it was my time to actually start auditioning be on set, I was like, oh, I know what these people behind the camera are doing. So I'm conscious of everything. So that's why I started, bro. And it's a beautiful thing. Just, you know, keep keep learning every single day in class or auditions or watching movies, shows, whatever it is, learning from everybody here. And uh like el orgullo you know like the being proud to be latino in this industry that's so few of us it's a la's big but at the same time for our industry it's small you see the same people at auditions you see the same people on set plus you cut it down being latino it's even smaller so it's for me to be able to say you know i'm mexican guatemalteco like gil you know being mexican like you guys it's like it's a, it's a privilege and it's an honor to, to have like the next generation come up to us and be like yo we look up to you like if if you if you can do it we know we can do it as well you know that's badass, man. Yeah. That's really cool. That's funny that you were talking about, uh, you know, your friend was on iCarly. You wanted to do background. That's exactly how I got started, too. I was like, Mom, you know, I got this kid at the skate park. He's in movies and TV shows. He's always in the background. Yeah. I think I could do it, too. So I went to Central Casting, and uh, yeah, yeah. I waited outside for, like, I want to say, like, four hours. I got there, like, 4 a.m., and I waited till 8 a.m. until they opened up. And then finally, when they opened up and I waited in line, I got to the front, and they were like, what are you doing here? I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, the little kids, the little kid agencies across the street. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> bro, I waited for four hours. Yeah, yeah. You know, my mom was mad yeah, in the car ride home, yeah, bro. Yeah. She pulled out the chancla, bro. I was like, ah, <laughs> shit. But yeah, bro, it was, it was one of those things where like, but you said it best. You guys all did it. When you're a kid, when you're young, you don't really understand this concept of like, yo, how can I can be on the movies and big screen? There's no way. That's yeah. impossible. Eso es para los gringos, eso es para los güeritos, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, bro. And, and something has shifted recently where I think we are seeing a lot more 
compared to how it used to be diversity inclusivity and and that's been badass man i've seen you guys star in some you know some pretty awesome projects you just did the mayans yeah bro i mean the mayans that was that's like a spin off from sons of anarchy sons right of anarchy, bro. sons yeah. of i grew up watching sons of anarchy that's yeah. my one of my favorite shows and i always found the mayans like as some of the most fascinating characters on that show so now you got to star in that how was that bro bro that that was a, a, a blessing bro i was trying to get on that show for the past 3 years yeah and did you need your motorcycle license? No, bro. I, did. We did. I, I auditioned for it back in the day, and they're like, "Must have your motorcycle no, license." No, no, no. We we did our our biker club. We didn't have to on, on you know on that last season. We didn't have to do that, but it was a blessing, bro. Like I said, I was trying to get on it for the past three years, and um, I got it in January of twenty of this year, twenty twenty three. But like November of twenty twenty two, you know, like we all do, we go through our rough patches. I was just kind of like not doubting myself but at the same time i was like damn is this for me like i don't know like the opportunities that i want are coming in like how how you know i think they should be coming in yeah. so one day bro like I, i'm really big on faith and like, spirituality so one day i just sat down and i was just like i was like man just give me a sign that i'm going that this is for me that i'm going through the right direction and like i promise i'll never give up so my homie diamond who i started with up there he was like yo bro i'm gonna be in la like i, I want you on set you know to be shooting something for me i was like all right cool so I go, I start shaking everybody's hand and I see this little kid and like in the corner of my eye talking to his dad. He's like, yo, that's the guy from blah, blah, And I'm like, oh, shoot. So then we started shooting everything we, we, we get done and he comes up to me. He's like, yo, me and my dad love on my block. He was like, he was like, we love 19th Street. He was like, can I get a picture and an autograph? And I was yeah. like, I started messing around with them. I was like, yo, bro, you got to pay me a hundred bucks for this. I was like, yeah, <laughs> you know, so I took the picture yeah. with them and then I went out and then I was like, thank you. This is for me. Like I'm never yeah. giving up. Kept putting the work wow. on uh, November, December, then January, I got the audition for, for Mayans. It felt right when I sent it off. And then two days later, like my my uh, my agent FaceTimed me. She's like, yo, you booked it. And I was like, thank Whoa. you. you know? So I, I originally was only wow. supposed to be there for an episode. They, they ended up bringing me back for, for, for four episodes. So it was a blessing, bro. bro. Congrats, man. That's huge, you, bro. bro. That's yeah, Kurt man. Sutter, right? Yeah, Kurt Sutter. And he yeah. did South Sutter, Paul. L he did James. Yeah, I yeah. mean, <sighs> Kurt's the man, dude. Yeah, bro. Did uh, you get to work with uh, JD Pardo? Uh, yeah, we did. Bad yeah, yeah, and no, we saw Emilio on set too. Oh, you saw Emilio yeah, Chivo? Yeah, 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 Let's yeah, go. Chivo. <laughs> was he with Juanita? No, no, no. Did he have Juanita? <laughs> no, no. He was he wasn't doing any scenes, obviously, but he was behind the scenes and you know we gotta chop it up a little bit. Yeah. Oh, so. That's badass, dude. Yeah, bro. The lead of that show, I think JD Pardo, right? JD Pardo. Yeah, yeah. Um, that guy's got an interesting story as well. I mean, I remember yeah. one of the first things that I that I ever saw him in was uh I think he was in Twilight. He yeah. was in the in the in the part two of the breaking dawn right yeah and he and was he like a movie with uh, jennifer lawrence as well yeah 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 but i remember he's he, i remember listening to that guy's uh interviews and he was saying he was like same thing he's like man just give me a sign give me a sign yeah. and then he got that and then his career you know kicked off and same thing like us bro he was coming from paramount from from paramount uh no panorama panorama city oh from like the valley from the valley yeah bro and then i think elgin james yeah. told him was like you know what like i i have you for a, for another role like just come back in a couple hours he's like bro i live an hour and a half away i can't come back yeah he was like let me just get the sides let me just read in the parking lot and i'll come back in 45 minutes mm -hmm. after 45 minutes he booked it <laughs> Was that for Mayans? For Mayans, yeah. Damn. That's yeah. sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That dude's cool, man. He's yeah. like the Mexican Charlie Hunnam. Yeah, it's yeah. it's the there perfect, you like, you know what I'm saying? Perfect mm -hmm. uh, transition there. Yep. Uh, what about you, Z? You, you got at the gates, right? I mean, I saw that. How was that, dude? How was shooting that? I know that story is really personal. And, uh, you know, it, it was something you could connect with easily. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. How was that? It was cool, bro. It was like my first movie. Mm -hmm. I always see myself as a leading man. So I was like... I was working at Amazon at the time, dude, after on my block. I needed money, bro, during the pandemic. I was dropping off packages and shit, and um, <laughs> I would, like, call them, and I would be, like, on FaceTime. I'd be in my uniform and stuff, and I, like, I was, like, I have no money right now. Like, shit got hard during the pandemic and whatnot, and I was, like, I was still auditioning at the time, and I was, like, I need a movie. I was, like, by the end of this year, I'm going to get a movie. I'm going to be the lead in a movie watch, and then just slowly waiting and waiting, auditioning, getting close to stuff, and then at the gates came along and i was like cool let's keep going and then we got to the screen test and then me and the director augustus bernstein like connected like right away and i was like damn this movie's like this is like the kind of acting that i like this is the kind of like movies that i like like indie movies you know what i'm saying very personal and uh, we shot that for like two three weeks and i was like i couldn't even believe and it was with like noah wiley and miranda otto and like i was like whoa like it took me like a week to like figure out. I was like, damn, I'm the lead of this. I was like, yeah. fuck yeah, let's yeah, fucking yeah. go. I knew I was going to be something. Watch. And I was like, yeah. I was like, I'm going to be the fucking man here. And then um, 
it was one of the coolest sets ever. It was like my set. And then like having these actors like behind me. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize I did a movie till like afterwards. I was like, damn, I really it always did hits that. You at the end, right? I was like, Process. damn. Especially good. Cause if you let it hit it during, it screws with your psychology. It exactly. With your, with your ability to do take. Exactly. And I don't even like feel like any pressure. I was like, why am I not nervous right now? Like I'm, I was nervous that I wasn't nervous. Like the day right before the, we went to go shoot. And uh, I got nervous after we were done. I was like, I just left it all out there. I hope it was like, I hope it just captured my heart, like for real. And it did. And like the movie premiered at Duville in France and wow. it won another award in France and it's coming wow. to the New York Latino Film Festival. It's like doing good. And it got like a 15 minute standing ovation. And I can't go right now because oh, yeah. I don't got papers. So I'm not able to experience <laughs> it. I'm not able to experience <laughs> it. So they're like telling me and I'm seeing the videos and like people are like crying and they're like asking for me. And they're like, oh, he's in LA. I'm cooking chicken with my dad outside. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like you know, so like. Hey, we're celebrating over here though, bro. Yeah, we're and it's like, it's like a you. dream, right? And I'm like, I'm not experiencing it yet. So like, it's just like, you know, holding on, but it's going to blow the up. the strike and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, bro. It's just like. Const- I don't even know if we're supposed to be talking about it right now, but oh, whatever. We're, we're It'll be out by then. It'll be out. We've suffered out. enough. Who cares? Come on. Yeah, let me have my moment, bro. Writers, so like, Come on. <laughs> yeah, bro. It's like, uh, you guys will be there at the premiere. It'll be a, it's a beautiful movie. Yeah, it's like, it's like a love letter to my mom. And like, yeah, I can't wait for everybody to watch it. It's super love. I love it. I like yeah. what you said too. Like you can't get like, you can't let yourself get too in the moment in the middle of it or else it's going to mess with you. Yeah. Like same thing. Like when auditions, like when we all help each other with auditions, like you can't think about, can't think about the technical stuff. Mm-hmm. Not even you, just, you gotta that. let your boy or your, whoever's reading with you. You gotta let them kind of be like, Hey bro, don't, don't look there. Look here. And you're like, okay, cool. But you stay in the zone of the character of the that, mindset. Or you can't get too ahead of yourself. Like, damn, this can change my life. Oh, hundred like, percent. Yeah. Life, like the money or like the opportunities that can come. Cause if you start thinking too far, you're not going to be in the moment you know what's funny bro i don't even look up and maybe this is a bad thing i tell my manager i'm like hey tell me about the project what kind of project is this similar to style wise and then i won't read who's directing it and i won't read who's uh casting it if i read who's casting it i get in my head i'm like oh shoot she's casting it i'm like i can do it this way i'm like oh shoot i don't want to you know what if i embarrass myself in front of her like i know it my last four auditions with her were really great now this one's got to be great and then you start to get in your head yeah and there's nothing worse than an actor being inside of their head. Yeah, sure. They're there to put on an external performance. And then once they go internal about not the character, but about themselves as the actor, yeah. then the story comes crashing down, dude. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's, it's, it's a very uh, wise tip for aspiring actors. Always be on the outside. Yep. And if you're on the inside, be, be in the character's mind, not in your mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being like, oh, how do I sound? How do I look? Yeah, yeah. this can change my life. Yeah, because I guarantee you, they're not thinking, of, the casting directors aren't thinking about that. They're just thinking about, you know, how-, how Can this kid act or not? Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah, just can you get the job done? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And listen, and they're also, for aspiring actors, they're also there to root you on. Exactly. They're not there to judge you and slam you and be like, nah, he's not going to get it for this reason. I mean, they are, kind of. But they need- uh, actors to put up a performance so then they can send it out to directors and it makes them look good bro you gotta change your perspective on it yeah. once you realize that you are the solution to their problem exactly potentially when, yeah yeah potentially then exactly then then that's when you know and even if you don't get it if, if they get five to, to ten options of of some decent quality uh performances they send it out to the director yep. it's up to the director mm-hmm. but the director's gonna be like all right thank you for giving me 10 awesome performances he killed it he killed it he killed it uh, but we can only cast one. You know what I'm saying? Of course, but yeah. for the next audition, for the next there project, you in mind. you're always in their mind, bro. Always in their mind. That, that happened to me. I kept getting brought in for uh, Daniela and Amber, and they brought me in for uh, uh, a Disney musical. So I, I didn't get that, but I tested for it, and they kept bringing me in over and over again. And I owe those ladies my, my whole career, you know, because finally they brought me up for all my block. And uh, that was the audition that changed my life ultimately, yeah. really. But, uh, but now that we're speaking on that, I want to ask you guys, I've spoken to about my audition process for that show. Um, but how about for you guys? How was that? Like, what was the audition like? Like, were you guys all in the room together or chemistry is any of that stuff? Or like, did I see happened? you? No, huh? No, I don't I think we saw each other. I don't know if I, I don't know. know. Like, did you see other, like, did you see other like guys who were going out for yeah, your Yeah, but I don't really talk to them. I'm just yeah. like, <laughs> don't look at me, bro. Let me fuck something. That's like, I'm like, I, uh, and that was like my first, like, I had auditioned for it like two years prior, like for season one, I had went in for Caesar two and then Ruby and I was like, but it was like my first audition or like my second one. And I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Yet. I was still very green. I was just like, I just wasn't ready at the time. And like, I, I was just not 
the time for me at the time. And then uh, it came back full circle and I auditioned for Sapo and um, I knew Eric was on the team already, you know, shout out Eric Gutierrez, my acting coach. He had been my acting coach for like two years at the time and he would leave for a while to go shoot the show. And then, you know, season three comes along and I was watching the show. I was like, the show's good. And then, um, yeah, that was like a big audition for me. I was like, I'm gonna get this time. I like came with like a chip on my shoulder. I was like, I'm gonna get it this time. And then um, I went in and Eric at the end was like, that's a guy and just gave me one final push and I got the role and I was like, I remember when I first got on set, I was like, what? <laughs> I remember I got the phone call. I was like, I got it. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah here we go. I was hyped, bro. I was like, heck yeah. Because it's a big show, bro. And it's like yeah. legendary. Like a lot of kids see themselves in that show. I was like, this is sick, bro. And then meeting everybody else. Like you left a big impression on me like the first day I met you. Like, like heavy. I was like, I wanted, you know, a lot of times like lead actors or like actors are like in a bigger position can just like, kind of see the other actors is like below them and like you coming up to me and shaking my hand and like being very respectful and like making me feel welcomed like was like the best set and that lets us like have room to like play mm -hmm. and like you know be there like i remember when you sat next to me you were eating your food that you know that little picture oh, of, yeah, us? That like, photo of us like eating food, yeah. you came like you came and sat next to me and you're like you asked me you're like how are you doing that i was like what are you talking about he's like you're doing so much you don't even have any lines i was like and in my mind, I was like, why is the lead actor acting asking me? And I was like, this dude's like hungry. He like wants it so bad. He's still like learning from everybody. I was like watching behind the monitors. You're still watching all the like scenes going on. That's like very inspiring, you know, because like, most actors don't do that. And they don't want to learn from everybody else. You know, you got to be a student of the game, constantly learning from everybody. Exactly, man. And there's always like space to learn from everybody, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I steal some things from other actors. I'll make it my own. Like, I'll add my whole flavor on there. But every actor has such a unique style. Like, you do so much without even having to say anything. Mm -hmm. The camera just gravitates towards you. And like, you you, you sort of like have this presence, right? Mm -hmm. And to me, those are some of the most fascinating actors to watch. Because mm -hmm. it's like... Yo, he didn't say anything, and I'm I'm just staring at him like well, that scene where uh and you, this was totally improvised I think, but when you were inside of Dwayne's diner, and then my dad on the show he's he's telling you to get the hell out or something, and then you grab the oh, candy yeah. and you're just like you just drop it right, <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, dude, was that that was improvised, bro. It was improvised that wasn't but... in the script at all, and I was like damn this guy's he's sharp and he's quick. I wish I would have thrown the whole thing. I just didn't know if we were going to get in trouble or not. But I remember I was like, I threw a little bit of candy. But the, but like, the but subtleness was yeah. like, it even spoke louder. Because if you would have thrown it everywhere, it would have been like, For sure. you know what I mean? Like Telemundo, you know? But that, <laughs> <laughs> but that was like so subtle. And it was like a big F you mm -hmm. without like having to say it. That was badass, man. It's really badass. Yeah. Yeah, bro. I just really appreciate it. They taught me a lot, bro. Day one. Like I like learning how people are on set and off set. Like it shows how you are. Yeah. Also a leader of the set, you know, but yeah, good on you, bro. You're done. What about you, Gilberto? How was, how was the audition process for On My Block? I mean, being the leader of the 19th Street, I mean, that's a pretty epic role. And uh, I want to touch on some other points with that role, but how was it getting, you know, the audition and the whole audition process? I was so excited when the, the email came in because I was like such a fan of the show. I was like, oh, dude, what? Like, I've never even gone in for the show before. Um, and I got brought in for, for Sapo. But I like saw the, but I they had like the breakdown of the other characters and I saw Quetta and I was like, oh, he kind of seems a little like, I don't know. There was just something about him that I was like, he seems like he'd be fun to play. And, um, and so I just remember like, I, I think I put myself like on tape in my home just to like kind of see what I would look like before I went in, in and stuff. And, um, I went in, I remember I had a Taco Bell commercial audition after the, the on my block audition. It was like. I was like, it was a pretty, it was like probably as big as this, the waiting room. And, um, they brought me in and my hair was like super long. Cause I was working on something else. And, um, I did like the whole, like Sapo sides and everything. And then in the room, the girls that were running the session were like, would you be, would you, are you, would you read for Cuete? And I was like, yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. And um and then they're like, well, if you want, you can just put yourself on tape and just send it to us by tomorrow. And I was like, I can do it right now if you want. And they're like, uh, well, we'll print out some sites for you, but we need it in English and Spanish. And I was like, no, no, I, I got you. You're Give me pro. like 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. But I don't know where that confidence came from. I was like, <laughs> dang, bro. Like, yeah. but um, but it was just one of those things where like I just I don't know. He just seemed like so fun and so so like a 
completely different than Explosive. who I am. Like, yeah, just like I'm like nowhere near that individual. But um, but I just thought it would be like, it's just let me just have fun with him. And and I remember just thinking of like things before I like the night before, like of things that I feel would be more in line with his character versus the one that they brought me in for. And so, yeah, and I went in and I just played around with them and I don't even really remember much. I just remember leaving the room and the girl that well, I think was an associate, she was just like, good job. And I was like, oh, you think so? And she's like, yeah. And I was yeah. like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, yeah, and then about a week later, uh, I got an uh, an email saying that if I was willing to shave my head, that they would send me an I was going to say, wait, so you weren't bald when you did the audition? No I, was, no, I was working on the show Never Have I Ever. And so, like, my hair was, like, super oh, long. Wow, okay. Yeah, and then, um, and I was like, I told my agent, I was like, yes, but like, can will the scheduling work out? <laughs> yeah. And um, because I was still working on that show, and so like, I, I, it looked out that the day I rapped, never have I ever. The next day was my first day, and that's just like how it's just how scheduling worked out. Yeah. And then yeah, and then they, which is good because sometimes you know people don't know this, but sometimes you're working on a show and you book another show, but because of your availability isn't like you just don't have it yeah. you can't do the other show yeah you gotta go with somebody else and it's and the most heartbreaking uh, thing ever you're like no because you're like no it's like it's like watching the person you love just go with somebody else you're yeah just like, damn that that should have been me <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so they yeah and then they it, it was just i don't know and then they just i remember i went into the trailer and jessica was like you can say no about shaving your head and i was like no no i'm gonna shave my head I'm gonna shave my hair. It was, it was, I, cause I only met you with, with your, your head bust. Yeah. I didn't see you with your long hair. So when I saw him, I was like, I was like, damn, I'm kind of intimidated by this guy. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I don't know if this dude's gonna like stab me or something. And, and, like, and I'm hey, all what? short too. No, no, you're yeah. like, hey, what's up, dude? And I was like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> all right. And He's I, cool. I had known, um, I, I did like a commercial years ago with Julio. So it was kind of like that when oh, I, yeah. Man. So it was like I hadn't known him, and then Ada, it's who spooky played, season by the way. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. A, a it plug. is spooky season now. Yeah. Um, no, it's, it's little spooky season. Little spooky. I, there you go. Next month, spooky season. There you go. <laughs> no, and um, Ada, who plays Cuchillo, she played my mom in a movie too. So oh, it was wow. like you know, it was like a pretty. I was like, oh, this feels chill. Like you know, I feel. Yeah. And then every like like piggybacking what you said like you were so great that first day like very you just were very welcoming and very just i don't know just really kind and i was just like wow like this is such a chill set like everyone is really sweet well i gotta say i mean the chemistry among the three of you guys was like you could read it on screen it was like you guys have been rolling deep together for for months and was that the first time you guys all met being yeah. there on set yeah because yeah. Yeah, you guys had a commodity like like of true brotherhood and it was nice that reads on screen so well. You know, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm sure everybody knows this by now, but like Jason, Brett, and Sierra, they all lived together during the shooting of the show. And they say it in the interviews. But uh, I, I think that really had a, it took a, a major impact on screen because you can't fake certain things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you get actors and you put them up and you give them a show and they just can't stand each other yeah. and they hate each other's guts. And because they have that hate for one another in person, it, it kind of translates onto the screen because then they're not gifting their scene partner. They could do certain things and they don't do it for them. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. I remember I had a scene where, I forgot what project it was, but it was a scene where I'm on the phone and I have to acknowledge it to somebody and uh, and I'm saying something and as I say that line, like, they didn't even acknowledge me. And it's mm -hmm. like, yo, we could have had a little moment there. You know right. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We could have had a little something there. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, you work with what you get and yeah. you make the best of it. You know what I'm saying? For sure. That was a fun set for you guys. But have you guys ever been on a set that was just like horrendous? Where you guys are just like, yo, what is going on here? Uh, and we don't have to get into specifics of which one it was. But yeah. what was the craziest thing that, like the most like WTF moment you've seen on a movie set? I remember one time I had a chemistry read and I had a, you know, I won't say the project and I won't say um, their name. Big star. They were producing their own project. Um, no, I can't. I can't. I can't. Just because my friend was also uh, producing that project. But anyway, uh, we're doing a chemistry read via Zoom. And they're getting their nails done. Getting their nails done, taking a bite out of sandwich, drinking their apple juice, whatever they're doing, right? And I'm just like in disbelief. Here I am coming off the show. 
here for a chemistry read. I'm professional, hungry, ready to bring this to life. It was a fun scene too, right? So I, I understand that I didn't have to have like this sense of like Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, but but to be getting your nails done, eating a sandwich, yeah, like all show this some stuff. Respect. Like, come on, yeah. man. And they already had the job. So, you know what I'm saying? They they were safe. Um, and I didn't get it. And and it came out, it tanked. But I was so happy. I was like, thank God I didn't get that project. But man. that's the thing. And bro. not even because I didn't, not even because uh because it tanked, but because bro, I don't want to be on a set where I'm constantly feeling not wanted there, where I'm constantly feeling like uh like I'm a nuisance, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. I want to be working around people who are gonna inspire me, For sure. who I can learn from, and who who I can have a good time with, bro. Being on a movie set, you're there for like 12 hours, 14 hour days. It's like, you don't want to chill with people who are just like these egomaniacs, hide in their trailers all day, don't talk to anybody. It's like, come on, man. Yeah. But what about you, man? Any any horse stories that uh, that uh, you can talk about without dropping names? Yeah, I think the only one for me is just, but what, what I was going to say is like the important thing is to learn from it. Yeah. Like learn how not to be Yeah. when you see those type of people and then learn how you would want to be when you see those type of people that you know like like how we're all saying like how you you came up to us you know humble super genuine and learn from that so when you're like damn when i get to that level that's how i'm going to be with somebody who i don't even know and that's how it just should, that's how it should be in just regular life yeah. if you're at the grocery store you don't yeah. gotta be an asshole to anybody 100%. bro just be to be a good kind human 100%. being and that good karma is going to come back to you 100%. but for me i think the only time was like when we were shooting uh i think it, I, th- I forgot what project it was but the guy didn't know his lines so he asked for a teleprompter. So, if, so if like me or you were shooting a scene, they, they had like the lines in the back of, in the back of the other actress. No man, and, and see, no, yeah, on, and that was like the only thing. Like everybody on set was just dreading the because it was like a three day shoot, it was, it was a short, uh, short project, and everybody was just dreading that. Because on top of that, he, on top of him not knowing his lines, he was just a dick to everybody. I'm like, bro, at least learn your lines, yeah, bro. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I think that's the only. That's the only like horror story, I guess you can say, that happened that happened that, to me. That blows my mind though. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, we're actors. Our whole job at the very minimum, memorize your lines, show up to set on time, yeah. and deliver your lines. Prepared. Yeah. That's it, right? Like at the at the That's very, yeah, like, very yeah. minimum. Yeah. Obviously, there's so much work if you want to be a great actor, even a good actor. That's like the, the bare actor. minimum. Yeah, that's bare minimum. Yeah. When and you can't memorize your lines, bro, that's disrespect, not just to the crew, not to the director, your co-stars. That's disrespect to yourself. Yeah. For sure. That's disrespect to your childhood, who was the dreamer, who was like, damn, when I do that, when I'm on set, I'm going to crush it. That's disrespect to your past self, bro. I never want to be like that. You guys were never like that on the show. You guys were always professional, always having a good time. Mm-hmm. And always when it was like, when we were about to shoot, you guys were always in the zone, bro. And that's what I really admire about you guys. You guys were like this young generation of, of actors who were serious about the crafts, but also just such a joy to be around. Yeah. Sometimes we're in this industry and not even just the young people, but like I've been around some older cats who've been in this game for a while and they're just a headache, dude. They're a nightmare to be around. Yeah. And it's just like, why, why are you still doing this? Yeah. Why are you still doing this? You're, you're not, you're bringing everybody down. It's like, it's like a hassle for you to do this. This is a privilege, bro. This job yeah, is like exactly. 1% of a privilege. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is a privilege. Um, but it always blows my mind, dude. But not a lot of people can get the opportunities that, you know, we've all been blessed with yeah. in this room to be in. Like my audition for for On My Block, I met I met this girl uh, while we were waiting. And she was telling me, you know, she's like, man, I've been acting for like 12 years and I still don't have like my SAG card. And I was just like, whoa. And I had only at that time from On My Block, I had just started acting maybe like a year. And I had already got mine yeah. and I let her know, but I didn't know it was a big deal. Got, you know, I was green. I, I didn't know. And uh, so, yeah, man, it's just, it's just a blessing to to be able to work yeah. and just to be able to be on set, do what you love, get paid to do what you love, yeah. be around people that, you know, you can learn from either good or bad and just keep it pushing, man. Then on to the next one. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, it's really good advice, man. I was going to ask you guys, if you guys were to give some advice to like, Cause there's a lot of young kids out there, especialmente siendo Latino, right? All these Latino kids, bro, who they see you guys on the screen and they're like, damn, I want to do what he's doing. I want to do what Gilberto's doing. Um, what advice would you guys give them? Like as far as obviously the technical stuff, which they can learn at the actor's campus. Hey. Yes. <laughs> but as far as like, uh, you know, the, the mentality behind joining such a tough industry, 
mm-hmm. an industry that doesn't care if you're healthy, happy, sick, sad, whatever. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's a ruthless industry. Um, what advice would you give somebody to the screenwriters, directors, you know, the young generation? I mean, to be honest, bro, like in the beginning, it's like very easy to like get lost in like the like the glamour of it all mm-hmm. and like wanting fame and like yeah. wanting attention and then like honestly just focus on the craft mm-hmm. as much as possible like everything else will be bestowed upon you and even like we talked about representation like i know like being latino like we're like probably like one percent of the industry but don't even like focus on that because it takes power away from you mm-hmm. like i know i'm mexican i'm proud to be mexican i'm proud of my nationality i'm proud of where i'm from you know what I'm saying? There's like a difference between that. And like that allows me to like become anybody I want to be. I want to be on this wall. I will be on this wall one day. Oh, yeah. But focus on the craft. And don't get lost in yeah. the, all the attention. Like it's very easy to like feel Especially like. Especially nowadays right with social media. Yeah. The Instagram, the fucking views, this and that. I fell to that like in the beginning, like with all my block. It was like. I was like, going to say, you guys got some massive like eyeballs of how was that? A dude, like in the beginning, would you get like random people exes and stuff coming out of the woodwork? <laughs> so, like, like, how was that? It was just weird, bro. See, that was I like, miss you. I was, uh, <laughs> I was, uh, I was, <laughs> I was, uh, I was expecting like ten thousand followers, probably like at most. In like four days, I got like a hundred and sixty thousand. Say you jumped up, bro, and I was like, what the hell? Yeah, I had like four lines on the show, bro. What's up with that? And then like, and then. Kids were like coming to my store. They were driving out from like San Diego, like over here, like to meet me. And I'm out there cooking chicken with my dad, bro. And like, I'm like, you want a picture of me? I'm like walking down the street and they're like recognize me off like something so small. And I was like, but then like I said, no one's teaching me how to do this. I'm like learning, but slowly. And like, I'm like very green. I'm like, I was going live all the time. And I was like, I was like, I got lost in the dopamine of it all. And like, and then the pandemic hit and I was like, I have nothing to show you guys. Like, I don't like posting just to post. Like, it's just not really my thing. I'm, I rarely post. And, you know, if you do, that's cool. But I like to, like, focus on my craft. And then, like, I, I, I lost touch of, like, my craft for a while. I was just like, I'm here now and I'm going to keep leveling up. And mm-hmm. it's very easy for me to, like, have my ego inflated coming from, like, where I come from. Because, like, I have a chip on my shoulder all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like, growing up super poor and, like growing up the way I grew up and like I just had to learn that humility and like remember how you were on set remember how they were like you know what I'm saying so and also nobody taught us nobody nobody t- t- our, our parents didn't you know what I'm saying our parents came came over here from Mexico from across the border and they didn't they didn't make it to this point no one teaches you especially in school they don't teach you how to manage no. success how to manage attention how to manage all of this stuff that gets thrown at you once you attain a, a level of success. For sure. So how did you overcome all that stuff? Just diving back into the craft? I, I, I emailed Ed Harris and I was like, if you know who Ed Harris is, he's a, he's a G. You know what I'm saying? That's like an artist who's an actor. That guy's like legit. And I met him at the Sundance Labs like right before I got on my block. And I was like, I'm like lost. Like I deleted that Instagram too. I deleted it. I like made a new one and... I was like, this is like fake fame. It's like not real. It's not going to last right now until like I truly have my foundation. So I emailed him. I was like, I'm like, I want to sharpen my artistic knife again. Like, how do I do this? And like, I, he called me. He's like, let me give me a time and I'll call you. I didn't even ask for that. He's, I was just like, I just want some advice. And he, uh, he called me and, you know, we were on the phone for like an hour and he was like telling me about his craft and how he does it and got, not get lost in all this. And he introduced me to an acting coach called Steve Tightsore, who absolutely changed my life at the Imagine Life studio. And now I'm just about my craft again. Now when I know when it truly comes, when I truly blow up and I'm truly number one, I'm not going to be lost in all that shit. That doesn't matter. I'm like just focused up on my craft, not forgetting that. It's just easy to get lost in that. Super easy. And no one, no one's teaching you that. It's hard, but I overcame that. I was like getting humbled, bro. I was at Amazon. That, yeah. <laughs> my my coworkers would come up to my truck and they're like, "You you you come out and on my block, huh?" And I was like, "Yeah, fucking <laughs> hell, dude!" And like working, and then like having all that and like coming down here again. I was like, not that you know working Amazon's bad, but like I was just like, I thought I was gonna be in a different spot right now, and it wasn't like that. It was just like I had to like remember. It's like that Michael B. Jordan story where he's talking about it, and he's like, "Yeah, I did that one show, The Wire." And it was good while I was on that. And then afterwards, I was like, 
yo, am I going to have to get a job at Jack in the Box? Mm-hmm. And he went to mm-hmm. go apply. And then his homie was like, hey, dog, come on. Like, keep focusing on your craft. Keep working keep working towards your goals and your dreams. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and we always got to remember, too. And I struggle with this all the time. I'm like, it's a it's a marathon. It's 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 sure. it's a it's not just a sprint, man. We're in this game for, for I mean, these guys on the wall, I don't know if the camera can see it, but you got like what Denzel Washington, Leonardo DiCaprio, Al Pacino, Al Pacino DiCaprio Robert De Niro, Murphy. Marlon Brando, uh Johnny Depp, uh Ray Liotta, R.I.P. man. Like these guys are in their forties when they were doing these projects. Exactly. These are the prime projects. These are these are when like the whole world really gets a grasp of these actors mm-hmm. and is like, yo, these are these guys have established themselves as true artists, as true actors, and uh, and they they grew up in a time before social media. They grew up in a time before the internet, before all that stuff. So it was easy for them to just focus on that. But nowadays we get thrown so many different things at us. Oh, you got this guy driving that car. Oh, this guy's doing that project. You're competing with the whole world. Mm-hmm. So, so how has it been managing that? Gilberto, like being an actor, being in this industry, coming off the show, um, and then and then just seeing everything around you, kind of like, how did you manage all that? Especially, and and our show came out during uh, the pandemic too. Dude. Yeah. So how was that? Um, I mean, I my my family keeps me pretty, yeah, you know, pretty grounded and stuff. Um. But I just, yeah, like saying, I'm like, well, this is so weird, dude. Like, and especially because I had a shaved head, so I had hair, and people would be like, you know. But I think it was the eyebrows. Did like they try? Wait, did they try to like punk you out or anything, or like, yeah. like the cholo guys? This <laughs> happened to me, bro. For when real, I shaved wait, my man. head, when I shaved my head, I was yeah. living in Hollywood, and on uh, La Mirada Avenue, and uh, I just remember coming home one day with my shaved head, and I had like these like real homies, bro. And they were like, "What's up, dog? Where you from? <laughs> yeah. What's up, homie?" Well, and I didn't want to be like, I didn't want to be like, "Oh no, dude, I'm just uh, the lead in a Netflix series." I didn't want to say that either because my apartment would have would have gone robbed. So I was like, "Oh no, nah, bro, it's just it's just fucking hot outside, bro." <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? No, I was like, "It's just hot, bro." I just yeah. shaved my head, That's but they funny. didn't buy it, bro. bro. That happened to me they on didn't set buy the first it, bro. day. Oh yeah, because I had the, the tattoos and stuff. And then these 19th two, Street, yeah, yeah, these two dudes came up to me like, yeah. "What's up?" And I'm like. What's up? Yeah. But I forgot, like I had the, the big old marijuana yeah. on my neck <laughs> yeah. and the tattoo <laughs> stuff. And they're like, they're like, where are you from? I'm like, uh, Norwalk and Victor. <laughs> they're like, they were like, all right. And they looked yeah. at me like that. And then Eddie yeah. saw that. He was like, yo, bro, just come over here. They're like, you gotta be, yeah. you gotta be, uh, you gotta be careful because where we're shooting at right now. Yeah, so he's yeah, like, yeah. just stick over here. Where we're like, shooting at. Yeah, and some of the some at. of the homies that they would get on the show, they were dope. Yeah. But like other other people would come by and they would see that. And like I remember some dude try to like steal a, a camera oh, oh, from damn. one of the camera guys. He started he started ruckus, bro. He just started chaos. And the cops had to step in there. And uh, you know, he threw up his gang signs and this and that. And in the back of my head, I'm like, dude, we're just we're, we're just, just trying to shoot. Bro. Just like, we've been shooting for eleven hours, bro. I just want to go home, see my dog. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I know. One time, I w- I went home and I went to Trader Joe's, but they I think they kept they told me to keep the tattoos on because I was gonna shoot immediately the next day. And so I went to Trader Joe's in, in Newberry because <laughs> I because you know? I need no because I think we I think we it was like an early day and so like I I had to go I needed raspberries for my oatmeal so I went and like. Newbury Park is, you know, you're not going to see people like, you know, dressed yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. And so the, everybody in the Trader Joe's was just staring at me. And I was like, dang, why are everyone staring? And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> the tattoos, the tattoos yeah. and the shaved head is kind of, you know, it's in your face. So, yeah. yeah. yeah but it was yeah. fun, though. Dude, that came out right as the pandemic was about happened. Up, yeah. That happened when everything got shut down, all the lock-ins. Um, and, you know, I don't, I don't want to say that we owe that credit. To the success of the third season because everybody's kind of like forced to watch it mm-hmm. but that season got for me personally like in my own opinion it, it got the most eyes it got the most attention everybody was talking about that season the ending oh everything yeah. like you guys the 19th street had such a huge impact but uh but how was how was the pandemic for you guys like just chilling like everything was locked up or that was rough bro that was rough it was rough like maybe three months after i think like yeah. the first couple months i was like oh first dude. few days were like okay oh, right. dude oh, this okay. is netflix this is and chill so watch some fun. scary movies yeah i think some apocalypse I, movies yeah i think i got through like the whole uh a game of thrones and everything and that but um uh, but i mean i I've, i handled it well i think like three months i was like okay this needs to get over and i i need to audition or do some work and stuff um but yeah, just kind of adjusting from that, from now self tapes 
and learning how to do self tapes was like with instead of my little ghetto setup that I used to have. Yeah, like you say, it was cool for like the, the the first couple couple weeks. You're like, okay, like we're just chilling out, but you know sooner or later you're just like man i just want to get back to work you know and like he said just like investing in more equipment you know getting like a ring light and soft boxes so your self tapes can actually you know become better quality i don't know maybe get a better phone or you know whatever it is or a camera but be able to do all that and just invest in yourself in the pandemic but for me man it, it was a um, um it, it was kind of rough because that's when you know my best friend passed away you know my grandma passed away during the pandemic so when she passed away, you know, I kind of got a chip on my shoulder. Like, you know, I got an angel guiding me and protecting me wherever I go. So now every project I do, every audition I do, I'm like, you know, I know, I know, I know it's mine. You know, I'm, I know I'm in the right hand. So for me, it, it was tough, but you know, uh, yeah, like I said, you, have, you got a chip on your shoulder to keep, keep pushing forward and not only make myself proud, my grandma proud, but my family proud and, you know, everybody else watching. So, yeah. yeah. And then I guess picking back up on like the momentum yeah. of work, cause it was almost like, you had to start from like zero to, yeah. you know, I was like, oh, dang, like, how do I, uh, how do I navigate this yeah. now? Yeah. And like so before could, we weren't even self-taping that much. It was mostly like, yeah, you know, in driving in person on this. Self-tape is a completely new concept. Oh yeah. Everything is self-taped nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather go in person though. To me, to me. <sighs> yeah. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm more of a self-taper guy. Uh, okay. When I'm in person, bro, I get nervous. I'm like, you only get one shot. Bro, I love man, showing my personality not let your to, chance to, to, to the blow. people in the room, man. Like, I feel like that's how you, that's how you, you win, you know, I don't know, no, another, no, another, another, you're, another you're tip, right. you know, if people who want to act, but that's like yeah. another tip. Like, that's your moment. Like, yeah, nobody absolutely. else is rushing you. Like, don't care about you're the- You're there face the, to face. You don't care about the, the person that was there before you or the person yeah. that's after you. This is your time, whether you have- if you have a one liner, milk, milk it, oh, yeah. you know, make it five, 10 minutes and just, you know, shoot the shit with the directors, producers, whoever's in the room, casting directors, but that's your time. Make it your moment. Cause they're always looking at, okay, does this kid get ha have what it takes at the same time? Like, how is he going to be working 12, 14, 16 hours on set? He's going to be a cool person or her, you know, are they're they there to test your pressure. They're, they're there. They'll be like, test. Hey, we like that, but do it this way. Can you do it on yeah. the spot? And they're just gonna happen. throwing stuff at you. Yeah. Cause they want to see how you do under pressure. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. and I, I like that. I, I do miss that part. I just, for me personally, whenever I would go into the room, the drive sucked. I'm not gonna the lie. Drives, to you. The, the drives, dude, sucked, the drives bro. would yeah. suck. You get there, you're all drowsy from your Santa car Monica, ride. Santa Monica, ten bro. Minute, you know? Yeah, Santa Monica, ten minute, ten minute audition. I just remember though, like being in there. I never, I could never really. I was always either personality or the craft. Yeah. I could never do both at the same time. Mm. Not, not until I got the job. Gotcha. Right. But during the audition, I was always like, I was always, even for all my block, dude, I had my hoodie on. I was pacing back and forth, just like getting in the zone, you know, had my headphones in there and I didn't really, I couldn't give too much personality. And sometimes that works, but sometimes they do want to see who you are. They want to see how you are. So for me, now that we get to self tape and all that stuff, it's kind of like, I'm in my own space, my own creative space. Yeah. I got my boy reading lines. I'll put up a take. I'll, I, I watch it. Do I like it? No, I could be better. And that's kind of a curse, right? Curse and a blessing. Cause then you're like, you get the 70 you, takes later. And exactly. You're just like, and then you pick the first one. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah you bro. watch them all Always. back and you're like, yeah. oh, the uh, first the one was the best one. Like, like me and Gil, we help each other out like on, on audition for self yeah. tapes. And I always like in the beginning, that's how it would be. Like, I would be like, yo, my bad, bro. Like, let me just do one more. Or <laughs> yeah. Do the same thing. I'm like, bro, yeah. I'm here for you. Like do as many as yeah, you want. But I then I had to be like, nah, Three takes and that's it. And I got to yeah. choose between those three takes, which yeah. I like, because I don't want to be stuck in my head. Shit, yeah. I know I had an acting teacher recently be like, you direct yourself? Because I told her something. I was like, oh, I feel like I could have done this different. Yeah. She was like, you direct yourself? And I was like, well, I mean, with self tapes, you, you yeah, kind of do yeah. in a sense, like you watch back and you're like, I feel like that could have been a better moment. You know, like there's just certain things that you used to look back and I don't know. Sometimes I do be thinking in my head, like the character, like, you know, how like, I don't know. What would he do in this moment? Yeah, like I'm just kind of like thinking as this individual and stuff like that. So I'm, you know, when I watch back, I'm like, hmm. Hey, weird question, but like, have you guys ever done an audition in the casting room and halfway through, you're just like, damn, I'm crushing it. And then, <laughs> and then, and then, and then as soon as you get that thought, you're like, oh shit. And, Next and, then, and then, yeah, yeah. And then you blow up. You guys, what's the weirdest thought you guys have gotten during an audition? <sighs> I, I, feel, I probably have just been like that was why did i deliver that line like that what was that or why did i pick that up or yeah. you know or i don't know there's probably awkward yeah. things that i think i'm doing yeah, yeah. but then it probably reads well on camera but you know in the moment you don't you don't really know how that's gonna look you know <laughs> yeah i don't know for me for me it's mostly like after 
I'm just like, oh, like it's the same thing. Like when you get in an argument with somebody, like when the argument's over, you're like, damn it, I wish I would have. Yeah, I wish yeah, I would have told yeah. them that. Oh, dude. Same thing oh, with nice. an audition. Like after an audition, for me, it's normally like, ah, oh, damn, I wish I could have done this a little bit better. I could have said this. I could have. You be that. up all night. You're like, damn, I could have tweaked that. Yeah, but yes. you can't. You can't though. You just got. You can't though. You just got to let it go and onto the next out. one. Yeah, that's why it's super important. Like you, you prep up and then you show up and you just throw it all at the wall and just forget it. And you just kind of. It's almost like you kind of black out. Yeah. yeah. During the take. Yeah. That's when the best takes come yeah. out. Yeah. Cause it's always when you're like when you're trying to like be robotic and and, and then you watch and you're just like, yeah, that one was good. And then you're like, nah, that, that wasn't that good. Yeah. And it's always the ones where you're like, ah, I don't know. I, I don't remember that take. Let's watch it. And you're like, whoa, I did that. Mm -hmm. That came out. It was spontaneous, it was unpredictable. But what about for you, bro? I mean, how's the audition process? Do you like self-tapes or I'd rather do self-tapes, bro, because like <laughs> That drive is crazy, bro. And yeah. then like <laughs> and the parking yeah, and all that stuff. Got, I don't know how many parking tickets I've gotten from getting <laughs> over there, bro. And then like, and I don't mind like seeing other actors and stuff, but like you only get like one like take at most or like two. And then like, you got to show your personality. But like, I'm like, I approach my acting different where I like, I have to be in a certain zone. Like you say, yeah. yeah. I don't like being there like, hi, everybody. Oh, I love my day today. You know no, what I'm saying? No, like, no, not like that. I fucking hate that shit, bro. That's, actors make me cringe, bro, when they do that. I'm just like, I hate that. Just cringe. Yeah. For what? And then like, let's just, you know, we're here for business. Let's do it. Let's run it. Yeah. And you can't come off like an asshole either because, you know, yeah. you got to, it's like a balance. But yeah. now with my self-tapes, like, it's just me yeah. alone and working with my little brother uh, or my friends just helping me out. And then I booked most of my projects off self tapes. I think the only thing I booked was on my block in person. That's when the pandemic hit after, but it was just like, I like self tapes. I get to choose what I want. Yeah. And I think it's more be, private. I think yeah. being authentic and genuine too is like, just be you. Like literally just be like, I remember the, one of the guys from mine is Vincent Rocco Vargas. Like he brought his dad, he, he brought his dad to the audition room. And he didn't even know he wasn't supposed to like, not that you couldn't do that, but you know, just go in there by yourself. But Elgin James, like he went in there with Elgin and Red with the director. And then after that, like he knew he killed it. So his dad, so Elgin James was looking from the top of the window, looking at uh, Rocco going down with his dad. And, his, and then he was like, yo, dad, I think I got it. He was like, yeah, son. Yeah. And then his dad just started like going on top of him and, you know, cheering him on. And I guess Elgin saw that or Kurt Sutter saw that. And they were just like, oh, that's real. Mm -hmm. He was like, we need that. Like and then they booked him off that off that obviously off off his read but because they saw that moment between him and his dad yeah mm -hmm. wow bro. yeah and yeah, no, I I I I did a job a role on Mayans and I remember when I auditioned for it I had a homie like let me borrow like these like shorts because it said like he was a gangster. And so I like I bought hot Cheetos. Uh, <laughs> I was like in the in like house shoes, like in the waiting room eating my hot Cheetos, and this dude was just staring at me. I was like, "Do you want some?" And it was like this whole I don't know. I like in my mind, this is what I wanted the character to be in that yeah. moment and stuff. And so that was that was really. Big. But yeah, but they sometimes do look at what you are gonna be like before and after. Mm -hmm. Like I think somebody told me your audition starts like the moment you park you walk in the room. Oh, okay. or you park, you know, when you get out. Cause the I'm, moment you, you come into parameters, like when they can see you, that's when it starts. Room. Yep. Yep. No, like even in the parking lot, your part, if they got a window and they can see you and you do some like messed up, you know what I mean? Thing in the parking lot. Yeah. Oh dude, I wouldn't, I, would, I personally wouldn't hire the, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're showing your real self. Yeah, 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 yeah. You used yeah. to drive from here all the way Bro, over? I used to drive from Corona to LA since yeah. I was six, since I was 15 and a half. I was taking drive, classes. Bro. Oh, dude, it was it was bad. I tell everybody, I'm like, I moved to LA from Corona. And they're like, You move, you don't have to move. I'm like, trust me, you don't know the drives. The two hours there, two hours back. That's four hours. I mean, the audition, what an hour, the whole process. I can get a part-time job with that. I can make some money with that. And that's exactly what I did. I moved to LA. I got a job at Wood Ranch. I got a job working postmates. And then I was auditioning and going to class, and that was my life. That was it. I didn't have time to hang out. I didn't have time for a girlfriend. I didn't have time to party. And you know, that might sound like a shitty life for some people. But for me, that was life. That's what I was willing to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is what I'm willing to put in. It's like playing poker. Like I'm, I'm going all in, bro. I don't care if I, if I walk away with nothing. I'm going all in because I want to win big. Mm -hmm. And not too many people in life can do that. Not too many people are like, oh, I need balance, this and that. It's like, you know what? You go balance your life. You go balance it your way. I'm going to balance it my way. And, uh, and that's what I did, bro. And, uh, I don't regret moving out. I do regret staying out there for as long as I did. If I'm being completely honest, I love LA. LA is uh, a second home for me, honestly. But I, I think, uh, 
two reasons. One, I didn't have to stay there for as long as I did. I wish I moved back to Corona faster just because I was blowing money on rent. You know, I was, I was telling you guys earlier, three G's on rent on this little, this little studio apartment in Burbank. And, and it's nice. Sure. And like I'm across the street from Warner Brothers and it's dope, but do I really need this? Everything's self tape. I just shot an LAPD movie in Kentucky. Do I need to be in LA? <laughs> I just shot another movie in, in Budapest. And I'm like, dude, I don't need to be here. I'm just throwing money at the wall. This money could be going towards my family, my mom, a different, you know, something else, something better. Um, a podcast, you know, we could yeah. get some better equipment here. <laughs> Wait, what was it like in Budapest? Was that your first time in Budapest? Yeah, 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 yeah. I got some I got some mixed things to say, but ah, okay, okay, I, okay. I I personally I, I didn't have a great experience. Uh, everybody on set was lovely. All the people that I met within the job were, were amazing, but man, I have, I have some horrendous stories, bro. Like, man. you know, I, I'll, 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 I'm an open book, bro. I'm open with my fans and my people. Um, I remember we were, we were cruising. It was the first day we got there. So much bad shit happened, bro. I'm like getting PTSD right now. <laughs> oh man. But, I didn't so I, I get there, right? And I'm hungry as heck. I'm with my dad. We go to this restaurant and uh, we're eating outside, bro. And I just remember seeing this guy in the corner of my eye, my peripheral. And he was like stumbling, right? Just like, I don't know what language they speak out there. Hungarian, right? Probably. I'm pretty sure. Sure. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah. Think, hey, I'm like, they speak European. <laughs> they speak European. <laughs> but anyway, this guy was like slurring his words and then he sees me. And my dad's wearing a USA jersey. He's a big soccer fan. Right. He, he had a Brazil jersey. He had a USA and Ecuador, Mexico. I think he even. Oh, dude, I'll, I'll get to that story where he tries to buy a, a, a Hungarian jersey. Uh, but anyway, this guy's in the peripheral and he's stumbling, slurring his words. He's like, ah, oh, fucking Americans. Da, 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 da. And uh, he fucking he's like running towards me. bro. I feel him like on some get out shit. He's like running, bro. And I feel him and he swings on me Damn. and I duck and I get up and I push him away. And I'm like, what are you doing, bro? He's like, fuck you, America, fuck you. Oh. I'm like, well, first of all, like I'm Mexican American. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, <laughs> I don't even know how you know that I'm, I'm American. Like, I thought I, was, I looked Latino, but I guess not. And nobody in the restaurant did nothing. Not the waiters, not the manager, not the, they had security. Security looked my way and just looked away, bro. I was about to square up with this man, bro. I just got there. I'm about to shoot a movie. I'm 20, 22 at the time. And I was like, bro, I'm going to end up in jail tonight. Yeah. And my dad has to step up and break it up. And I'm like, bro, my adrenaline just kicked in. I, I just blacked out. I wasn't even thinking. I was just like, bro, survive or... or a little spooky you know came what I'm out. Oh, a little spooky came out, right? <laughs> <laughs> bro, and it was it was one of those things where I was just I was just in disbelief. And that was strike one for me, right? And then I was like, you know what? <sighs> people are shitty everywhere. There's shitty people everywhere. So let me just, you know, explore more with my dad. So the next day we go to a... Uh, we go we go to get him a jersey cuz like i said he loves he loves soccer he loves getting jerseys from every country that he, he he used to travel so much i mean my dad used to be the man back in the day right i mean he still is right but back in the day he was local he would travel everywhere and he would get jerseys from every country that he'd visit so we go to this spot and he's trying to get a a, a hungry uh jersey right from the country and the guy looks at him looks him up and down he's like say what are you mexican my dad's like yeah you can't come in here Damn. and my dad was like why he's like you cannot afford anything in here man and my oh. dad was like how much is that jersey and the guy's like too much too much for me bro buy your whole store. and my dad was like how much is it he's like 120 american my dad was like i was gonna buy that jersey but because you're such a fucking dickhead man i'm not gonna buy anything off of you and we just balance. And then I had to break it. I was like, hey, papa, like, chill out. <laughs> you know, like, first I almost fought. Then my dad almost fought. I was like, hey, calmadito. Yeah. We're both going to end up in jail, bro. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to shoot this movie. Pops, hold up. How was the movie, though? Uh, I mean, such a magical experience. Yeah. I mean, you know, man. I mean, working on, on a lot of sets, uh, people are so passionate about their uh, their vision. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's an experience. It's a collaborative experience. And uh, I had a blast on the movie. What movie was it? It was for Knights of the Zodiac. Oh, yeah. I remember yeah, 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 yeah. Sergeant Burbank. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had a great time on the movie, man, uh, working with, you know, legends, Famke Johnson, Sean Bean, McKenyu from One Piece right now. Shout fire, out to McKenyu. He plays Zoro. And uh, Madison Eisman, Mark DeCascos, Sean, uh, uh, who's he like? Nick Stahl. So many legends that I grew up watching, right? Sean Bean, Game of Thrones, Famke, mm -hmm. X-Men. 
So it was it was a surreal experience, bro. You look dope, bro. The oh, shaved head you with yeah, the, yeah, you just look cool. Yeah, like yeah, the yeah. Little earring. I was like, yeah, you yeah, look yeah. cool. It was like it was just completely different. You get to show like, bro. They tried to masks. shave my head as soon as I got there. Uh-huh. The director was like, oh, I got this, you know, cool vision for your haircut and this and that. And Tomek is dope. He's he's my boy. Great director. He produced The Witcher and all that. So he's he's a legend too. But when I saw the what he was trying to do to my head, I was like. No mommies, cabrón. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, not again. Not again. I ain't shaving my head like that. You're yeah. going to take my hairline back and right. it's going to be bald. I was like, hey, Tomek. I was like, you know, I just shaved my head for the last four years on the show. Called on my block. You probably haven't seen it. But but I was like, dude, do you mind if I keep my hair? And he was like, he looks at me. He's like, yeah. He's like, I trust you. And I was like, fuck yeah, man. Those are the directors you want to work with. For yeah. sure. Again, those are the those people, the creatives. Directors. Yep. Those are the people you want to work with, bro. Um, but yeah. All right, guys. So, you know, it's not, uh, it's not sudden news. We're in a strike right now. We're in an actor strike. We've been in it now for, I think about 90 days. Uh, how has that been? What are your thoughts on it? And when do you think it'll be over? Cause I'm trying to get back on set, man. I'm trying to do the, on my block musical, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure. I mean, I just did a short film for, uh, a shot at my store and we got like, we got some good money for that. And, um, Shout out to Scotty. Um, it was cool to shoot something at my store. I was like, I want to stay warm right now because like being in classes is cool and like, you know, but like I, I want to be on set too. But like, yeah, man, it's been crazy. It's like another pandemic. It's kind of wild. I, it, it's been, this decade has thrown so much at us being in the entertainment industry. Mm-hmm. COVID, then the mask mandate, all this stuff. Like you, I was, I remember doing rehearsals and I had like a kissing scene and I had I had to put my mask on for the kissing scene and we had to like pretend to kiss. What? And then once we were hitting rolling, then we could take it off. And it was just all weird. these little things, you know, it's not like it was life or death for me um, as far as like, oh, I don't want to act anymore. But it was like, yo, it, it doesn't make a difference. We're going to kiss in, in about two seconds either way. Like, let's, you know what I'm saying? Or maybe she just didn't want to kiss me. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, okay. Keep my mask hey, on. She's like, no, this. keep that boy's mask on. <laughs> yeah, get the Listerine too. Get, get a Diego stunt double for this one. Huh? <laughs> Bro, I've, I've done that before. Yeah. But it, it wasn't like with an actor I was kissing. It was like with this actor. I was like, hey, I told the director, hey, bro, I was like, breath stinks bro I was like, you get some listerine bro yeah so the director comes he's like, hey anyone want some listerine and the actor's like nah man i'm good and i was in my head i'm like fuck, <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck bro i'm like just take the listerine yeah, bro yeah, yeah. just take it but me. uh but yeah i mean how, what do you what do you what are your thoughts on the strike bro like right now like everything that's going on the studios the actors sag uh with the ai i know they're trying to like scan people and use their likeness for for the rest of their life essentially and a lot of people don't know this right. a lot of people are like oh fucking actors they're just complaining about everything all over again and it's like no 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 you don't get it some people make a living off background work yeah. some people go to and do background work to pay to pay for their bills to and put to put food on the table bro. it's not just actors bro makeup artists like hair, makeup, hair yeah. makeup, like everybody behind the scenes. It's not just actors; like it's affecting everybody. 100%. Yeah, man. So, what are your thoughts on on AI trying to take over? You know what I'm saying? Like some of these jobs and stuff. Yeah. I mean, I, I heard a story about some girl who was uh, she did a uh, she did like a, a background thing, right? And before she knew it, she started seeing herself in video games yeah. without her permission. They were using her voice. They were using her face. They're using everything. She was a main character on a on a big video game. And it's like, yo, you didn't pay her. Yeah, bro. you can't do that. I, I That's messed a, up. I had a breakdown like that. I didn't, I didn't do it, but I had a breakdown in like that. Where in the breakdown it said, like, especially specifically that, like, we're gonna, like, obviously we'll pay you for the for the day or for however long the shoot was, but you know we have the right to your name likeness for the entire universe or whatever like the legal terms are. And I was just like, no, I'm not doing that, but it's happening, you know. And it's just like you gotta, it's it's scary. It's scary. We're, we're, so you think what SAG is fighting for is good? I think it's fucking great. Hell yeah. Yeah. No, like, what they're fighting bro. for is like, yo, come on, man. Yeah. We ain't asking for 50%. We're just asking for some small just things. So, like, bit, just like crumbs. You know what I'm saying? Until we're A list, like right now, it's like rough, bro, making money all the time. Like, it's not as easy as people like see like the attention and the little bit of the fame or whatever, but like, it's not like as easy as it looks. We still need money. Bro, it's not not like every, we're not getting a, paid bank. Yeah, not every, Unless not you're 1%. Like Brad Pitt, you know? Nah, yeah. until we're there, not right now. We're exactly. like suffering heavy we're, and we're like working our way. And you guys ever heard about James Dean coming back in a movie, in a soldier's movie? You heard about that? No way. No, I haven't. No. <laughs> they were, After his three movies that he did? Re, like, not that long ago. I don't no. remember when, but they were like, the director's like, who could play this part that could, like, bring this, like, part to life? And 
they're like James Dean and they were gonna like scan his face yeah. and putting put him on the like movie. And I was like, bro, that dude's been dead like a hundred years, bro. Why guys let, let him rest, bro? Him rest, like man. that dude Come was on. a legend in his time. That's weird. Like why he yeah. can't be doing that without this his permission. Weird. I mean, he's, he's a dead man. Bro, Come I on. think one of his family Respect. members approved it. His like last living family member for some money, but yeah, yeah, I don't that, know if they ever did it. But I don't, I don't know if this rumor is really gonna happen. But I heard that what they're trying to do is like create platforms where, like, scan all the actors' faces and be like, okay, I want Diego Tinoco in an action movie in a forest somewhere in like, I don't know, Colombia or some Thailand, and make like with chat gbt and ai make a movie around that with your face and like everybody else and actually have that you know i don't know if it's true or if it's like a rumor but i'm like that's crazy where technology is going if, if it's, that's it's wild bro yeah. i was on i was on i can't remember if it was instagram or tiktok the other day but i was just scrolling right and uh the caption was new drake song so i gave it a listen and i was like damn this is fire yo yeah. <laughs> and then at the end the guy pops up he's like yo that wasn't even drake that was ai you just got got you know you got pranked and I was like, no mamas, bro, come on. Yeah. Like, if they can do that right now with that, imagine what they're going to do in the next 10 years. Imagine. It takes away from the artistry. Takes, I don't even know if, I, I've been telling my friends this, I'm like, dude, I don't even know if this career will be around in 10 years. Mm -hmm. For musicians, for actors, you know what I'm saying? Like, the studio, the studio heads, like, if I were to put myself in, like, their shoes and be like, if they really, I don't know how they think, right? I, let me not step over the line and say something that, that isn't true. But if I was this big giant villain studio head guy, I would be like, how can I avoid the cost? How can I get my product as fast as possible? I would do AI actors. I would do AI music. I would do AI all this stuff. AI performers, you know, they can tour the world. They can be in Atlanta one day and then Dubai the next day and then Florida one. You know what I'm saying? Like, or at the same time, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so it's scary, bro. It has it's no scary. soul though. You exactly. know what I'm saying? It's just kind of yeah. weird. It's just like, I don't no know how flavor. that would work with art. You can't do it though. Yeah. It'll work for like people. It'll be like live video games. It's kind of like weird. It's yeah. just, it doesn't work, but. But that goes to thing. say too, like, I don't think you should like, I mean, to each his own, but this is the way I think like you, you shouldn't just be focused on one thing for the rest of your life. Cause you never know. My thing is always just having different things that I love doing, not just for the money, but that I, that in interests me. Like for example. And like, you got a clothing brand too, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's badass. Like that or like yeah. investing in real estate, yeah. being in, being acting, investing in real estate, yeah. creating other businesses that can generate income for you. Yeah. So just in case one thing dies down, mm -hmm. you, you, you know, you have mm -hmm. multiple backups, not just for you, but for your family. And your you know, family, eventually we bro, all yeah. have kids as well, you know, so, so they can be good too. So it's always just about, and I find that it's a good thing that with a lot of actors that I have talked to that most of them have different things going on and they're not just always talking about acting. So they have different things going on, either traveling or businesses. Yeah. So they can pull from those experiences yeah. when they are, when they do go back to auditioning or, or on yeah. set, they can pull from those experiences. We're human beings, yeah. bro. Yeah. We're actors. We portray life. So it's even better so that we do take up, you know, our time and put it in other areas. So we understand life as a whole and not just life for its glamour. Exactly. Because once you, I feel like once you start getting those actors who are just, some of them, some of them are really good still, even with the glamour. But some of them, they just become so flat and so dull because they don't have any issues in life anymore. They don't, they don't have to overcome anything. They wake up, their million dollar mansion. They, they don't go and 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 put themselves in 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 scenarios where they have to test their ability still as a human. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That's why I got into like jujitsu. That's why I got into boxing. I'm terrible at it, but I'm learning, bro. Yeah. Because I wanna. I want to be as human as fucking possible. Yeah. Because those are the roles that interest me the most. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Man. Go fail. Go get your heart broken. Yeah. You know, do all go that type live of stuff. Life. Go live life. It'll yeah. teach you so much about yourself and like what you're good at. Yep. That's why I started the podcast, bro. Yeah. I was like, yo, we got a strike. Okay. People were saying it's going to last until February. And I was like, I was like, yo, stop. Can't be, <laughs> Come on, can't be still like, for that long. Come on, bro. bro. We already got our asses kicked during COVID. Come on. Let me, let us catch a break here. But I was like, you know what? Let me start a podcast. Let me start signing to me other merch. Let me start the actors yep. campus and teach people, bro. Yep. Cause and I, I said it on the last podcast, it's like if I'm not, bro, if I'm not busy, I'm chasing chaos. Yeah, man. I'm getting into situations that that just I shouldn't be in. I'm risking when my career. Getting your own head, getting mentally. in my own head. I'm I'm getting in my own way. Yeah. And it's like, let me be of let me be of use. Let me yeah. be of service, bro. Let me bring, serve. Bring value. Yeah, let me bring value to the people who support me. Let me bring value to the world. Even if it's a minor value, bro. Even if it's ten people, hundred people, it's better than me ending up like, you know what I'm saying, in a bar and, and you know, slamming 
Mexican candy shots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's the thing. Like, you never want to regret anything. Like, whatever you have, like, whatever idea you have in your mind, just go for it. Because yeah. you never know. It might work. It might not. And if it doesn't work out, but you like it, just keep pushing until it does work out. 100%. You know, just keep. But that's my thing. Like, I never want to live or die with regret. Like, I don't want to be, like, 95 because yeah. I want to live till I'm 95. I don't want to be on my death and be like, damn, when I was, like, in my 20s, I wish I could have just went for it. But, yeah. you know, I was scared or I, I cared about what people thought, like, you can't you can't live your life that way on on, on other people's opinions. Like you Dude, just gotta do it. I was gonna say on top. I've been thinking a lot about that lately. Anytime I make a post or put something out there into the world, I'm always like, ah, shit, is this corny? Ah, is this lame? But then I think about, it, I'm like, bro, these people aren't paying my bills. Nah, bro. I'm gonna die 100%. one day. We're all gonna die one day, right? Not to get on like a you know very like uh, negative actor, you know, thespian, but it's like, yo, one day the lights will go out, mm-hmm. and and people will be sad. But at the end of the day, they're going to go back to their own focus, their own lives. They ain't going to care about what you did. Yeah. They're going to be like, oh, this guy started a clone. Oh, this guy did that role. Exactly. Oh, that guy ran that restaurant. It's like, yo, forget you, man. I got my people. I got my team. I got my family. I got myself. Yep. I, had, I had a friend he told me, he's like, bro, why are you doing a podcast? Why are you doing merch? Why are you doing this? I was like, hey, homie, you pay my bills. You take care of my mom. You take care of my family, bro. You take care of my kids. Like you, you're not gonna do it. So then, why are you, why are you trying to give me shit? And more than that, why am I gonna listen to you? Yeah. I'm not gonna listen to you. Do you, do you, bro? I'm gonna hey, do me. Exactly. I'll, I'll do a podcast, or some merch. I'll fucking wait tables, bro. I'll go back to waiting tables if that means taking care of my mom. For I'm sure. I'm not gonna let her get a job, bro. She raised me my whole life. Yeah. She's nearly sixty. I'm not gonna let her get a job, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and it just goes back to one of those things where it's like, I feel like the the new generation today, it's like they just want it all. And by tomorrow morning, they yeah. just want it all. You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing. It's, like, when you, t- you talk about your homie. Like, that's why it's yeah. super important. Like, if you're young out there or if you're older, if you're in our generation, like, you got to surround yourself with the right people. Yeah. Like, we're all, you know, like-minded. Maybe not, you don't, not just surround yourself with people that are doing the same thing, but that are like-minded, that yeah. are hungry, that are disciplined, that have good habits, that yeah. are going to push you towards the right direction. Like, if anybody of, of, of us are starting a new project, I know without a doubt we're all going to be like, fuck yeah, bro. Yeah. Hell yeah, I'm proud of you. Whatever I can do to help you, like, or, or I can promote or whatever, like, I got you. Like, yeah. those are the type of people that you need in, in your life to, to keep you going, but not to bring negativity. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. bro. You'll never meet a hater doing better than you, bro. Oh, never, nah, dude. Never. never. And, like, people don't really see, unless you're adding money to my pocket, don't add an opinion, Doug. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you got nothing to help. Like mm, that's I, seriously though, because like I gotta help my parents out too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All my acting money goes straight to them. Yeah. Whatever you gotta do, don't care about anyone's opinion. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And, it's, and it's easy to kind of get caught up in thinking, overthinking everything, yeah, which sure. sometimes I I do. But I try to just focus on me and and like realizing that like I'm on my own personal path. Like it doesn't matter when things happen for me; they're gonna happen when they need to happen. And I think just staying grounded and like Herbert is always like we he talks to me and he's always just like you know just about gratitude and just like you know who cares about everything and about what everyone else thinks just like focusing on yourself focusing on what is better for you because what's good for me isn't going to be good for you for you you know what i mean that tunnel vision man it'll change your life yeah even if you just dial in for six months cut out the bs Mm -hmm. cut out the tiktoks and all that stuff it's like yeah it's crazy what six months could do to somebody yeah it's just going on a cleanse sometimes i'll just like delete my instagram or tiktok and stuff just to like uh, i'll keep youtube because i like yeah yeah youtube yeah yeah, I'll, like it's I'll be, I'll be cooking and I'll just be like yeah. listening to something. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I just you know I think just focusing on yourself and chasing the dream, chasing the dream, and just like and n- enjoying d- the process. Yeah, too, and man. not being in competition with anybody because it's like there's room at the table. For there's everybody. a seat at the table for everybody, for sure. like for everybody. So it's like who cares, dude? Like if someone's doing great, amazing. Like Bro, good for el sol sale para todos. Yeah, like yeah. Man, yeah. You know? Always being excited for everybody. El sol sale para todos. The sun rises for everybody. So that's great. There's no room for hate. Yeah, that's a good one, man. Yeah. Hey, bro. How, now it's been like what? How many years since all my block wrapped? Uh, it came out in 2018 and it wrapped up in 2021. So how, how's it been for you those last like four years? Are they like a blur? Are they like? Uh, you know? dude. You know, man. Like it's it's been a it's been an adventure, bro. I'm not gonna lie. It's been an adventure that that show had a a major impact on society. For, for, you know, brown and black kids around the world, man. They saw themselves in our characters, right? Changed my life completely. In some parts for the better, in some parts for the worse. I wouldn't have it any other way, though. Every problem I have, it's a privilege to have. Now I just got to learn and overcome uh, overcome them. Um, it's like, you know, every level is different. Every level comes with its own BS. Uh, I will say that 
I think my first four years, it was kind of like college for me. For sure. It was sort of this uh, kind of like we were, we were talking about earlier, this illusion of like, you have the whole world just coming at you and you're always going to have it there and it's always going to take care of you and always it'll always be there for you. And then reality fucking kicks in. You get the pandemic. You get an actor strike. You can't go shoot that movie because of the strike. The studio cuts the movie. Boom, you lost the movie deal. You're not going to work for the next until February. And it's like, yo, what is going on right now? Like, this isn't supposed to happen, mm -hmm. right? There's always your plan and there's always the universe's plan. Mm -hmm. And the universe's plan will always fucking win. The key is to adjust, bro. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it was nice, bro. It brought a lot of uh, interesting things in my life. I met a lot of cool people like your guys' selves. And uh, it's just a learning process, bro. You know? How was the last day? When you, did it hit you that you were like, damn, I just did a whole show. I was a uh, lead yeah. for like four <laughs> years. And like, yeah, uh, the last day. Yeah, it was sad, bro. I mean, it was on any set you do, you become a family. You learn, you laugh, you love each other, bro. It's all that stuff. And then, and then the last day kicks in. You're like, I ain't going to see these people ever again. And, uh, and we didn't even get a, a premiere, bro. We didn't even get a premiere for season three or four. No, we didn't. Yeah. Damn, that's crazy. Bro. So I, I, there was, there was never that, I, how do you say, um, when you guys like end, but not really, there was never that, uh, like that climactic ending, the, the climax. No, yeah. Uh, Closure, closure. yeah, 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 yeah. You, you know, closure. And yeah, bro, it was, it was. I'm still fine. You know, after the show, I was lucky enough to like, I chilled out for a week, and then I went to Budapest for like three months. Right. Then I came back, chilled out for a month, and then went to New Mexico for a couple months, and then Kentucky, and then supposed to be in Europe now, but it's like, you know, the strike kicks in, and like I said, the universe's plan always wins, bro. Mm -hmm. But I think it happens for a reason. I think it's God saying, hey. Prepare. Prepare, homie. Yeah. You had four years to do something. You could have started a podcast. You, you could have started merch your first year, and you didn't. Yep. So now it's it's gonna take uh, it's gonna take it's gonna take a little something else, a little, something a little stronger for you to wake up. Yep. And that's when I woke up. Yeah. I was like, fuck this. It's all perspective, bro. It's all about how, how you look at the life. Like yeah. it's all about how you look at the universe or whoever you believe in. But once you start taking on like those universal laws and that those signs. Once you start living your life by signs, you're like, okay, this is trying to what is this trying to teach me? Yeah. And then just go about your day like that. Yeah. And it's, not, it's not a loss. It's a learning experience. A learning. Every L is a learning experience. It's not a loss. Yeah, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm learning, bro. Yeah. There's some days that are still dark, though. You know what I mean? You got all that fame, all that attention. Like, yeah. it changed, like, from night to day, kind of, because the show dropped. And then, like, your numbers started coming up, bro. And bro, then, like. It was wild, yeah. You went from the kid in Corona to that, like. It was crazy, bro. What was that like? Um, Honestly, it was one of those. It was one of those moments that it just feels like a dream. It's kind of, like, surreal. And, uh, you know, I remember telling my brother, I was like, you know, at most we'll get a couple of thousand followers out of this. And then uh, I'll get some cool demo reel and I'll, I'll send it out to the directors. But then the show blew up. It was on the news. The IG was like 20,000, 40,000, 100,000, 200,000. I was like, what's going on right now? Now I got to be careful of of like old things that my kid self did out there. So I deleted my Facebook. I deleted <laughs> Me my too. Twitter. Me I was too. like, nah, bro. I ain't getting, Twitter posts. There's no way. I was like 12 <laughs> putting up stupid memes. I was like, nah, bro. Um... Yeah, bro, you know, exes come out of the woodworks. They all start, hey, Diego. <laughs> I'm like, hey, you didn't mess with me in high school. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, Damn, bro. Damn, bro, that's cool, dude. It's been cool. It's uh, I entered my 20s in a really weird way. For sure. I entered my 20s and the show came out and then I entered my 20s. And and then that was my life. And there's some things that, I, if I'm being honest, I don't know about. Like my homies, will, will, they'll put me in check. They'll be like, fool, don't talk about that subject because you don't know anything about it. You don't know what it's like to be in their 20s and, and try to go on dates and, and, you know, have to work two jobs and do this. Well, the two jobs part, I, I did know, but but there's just some social things that I I, I, I personally can't relate to because I never got to experience that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's mostly on like the dating stuff. Um, I just, I just not to like get cocky, but like I never had that, that problem, bro. Yeah. Like, for me, the problem was, hey, I don't want to, I need to right focus one. on my work yeah. and find the right one. And I have now. And uh, so now I get to just work and, and chill my lady. But, you know, I, dating, dating is something else, man. It can take a toll on a man. Yeah. It's very, and yeah. I'll be, I'll be the first one to say this, bro. It's, it's fucking hard out there for young men, man. Nowadays, yeah. especially it's very lonely. Yeah. It's a very uh, long uh, 
you know, journey for, for men to find themselves. And until they get there, they think that somebody else is the answer. You're and it's the not, answer. the answer is not externally. It's in, it's internally, yeah. man. Find yourself, find your people, find those voices and, and chase what you love, what, what gives you a sense of purpose. And along that route, you'll find the right one. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yep. It ain't going to be chasing this path or that path that you think you should be on. It's chasing the path that you know deep down inside. That's the one you should be on. And that's the one you chase. And that's when the right people come around you. And it's not even chasing, bro. It's attracting. Yeah, you attracting. Got, that's a perfect way. Yeah. Exactly. You got to just be on your purpose. Like as a man or a woman, be on yeah. your purpose and the right one or the right opportunity is going to come your way. Because if Absolutely. you're like emotionally in, in vibration on your, on your high frequency, oh. everything's going to come to you easier. Yeah. Yeah, man, and it's it's a it's a it's a different time. I think now with social media, I think everybody sees the nice cars, the nice houses, the the big paydays, and uh, I think a lot of young men out there, I think they uh, they get very like there's 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 so many different ways to internalize something, right? For some people, it might be motivation. Yep. Like if I see the big houses, the nice cars, all this, yep. uh, you know, the, the competition on the big movies, I'm like, hell yeah. I'm like, badass, homie. I'm like, now let me step my game up. Yep. But for others, it eats them alive. It'll eat them alive, bro. And they'll get in a negative mindset. And they're like, well, you know what? If I can't climb up, I'm gonna drag everybody down with me. And it's like, nah, dude, you, you got to rechannel that energy. Yep. You got to channel it into fuel, into purpose, into motivation. Because that's the only thing that that you got right now. That's the only thing that you can use right now. Obviously, if you don't like your 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 the cards in your life, like something has to change. Yeah. Some, you got to put the energy into something else that's going to advance it all. Uh, but for a lot of people, they see the external stuff and they're just like, fuck the world, man. Like they'll start like slamming everything and everyone, you know? And it's like, yeah, but you don't that see that the person way. went to go get that. that though. Yeah, yeah, exactly, bro. And that, yeah. that ain't the way. And I try to tell all the younger, the, you know, the younger people that follow me, it's like, uh, I try to tell all the younger people for anybody watching this, you know, focus on your mission in life, focus on yourself, focus on creating your team, your people around you. And really, really just focusing on that. Cut out the BS. Do you think if a boxer, do you think if Canelo spent all day doing social media and, and you know, and playing like video games and caring about the world and what they thought about him, do you think he'd be who he is? Nah, yeah, bro. Nah. He's always in the gym. He's trained. He's dialed in. You know what I'm saying? But there, there, there's like a, there's like a certain focus that you need yeah. to be the greatest of all time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I think Baker, like there's a certain focus that is required. I mean, you look at the greats, you look at Kobe, you look at Michael Jordan, you look at Al Pacino, De Niro, you know, some of these UFC fighters. I mean, my boy Brian Ortega, dude, that guy is Abuse. dialed in 24-7, yeah. bro. If it's not physically, it's mentally. He's always learning. He's always getting better. He's always studying uh, martial arts and, and business, too. That guy's smart, bro. That guy's put me on some knowledge where I'm just like, how how did I, how the hell did I not know this before? Yeah. And it goes back to you got to ask the right questions in life. You, get, you ask the right questions, you get the right answers. I'm curious, but if you, exactly if you don't have that curiosity, then then you ain't gonna it ain't gonna take you to that place that that you know that fantasy. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, wrapping it up. If there's one piece of advice to give to the younger generation, what would you guys say or give? I mean, you kind of just hit on the nail right now, but. Honestly, if you feel like a loser, you're probably just in a messed up situation at the moment. You're probably not a loser. Um, I hate losing, Doug, but I respect it. This was taught me the most in life. And, you know, even if you come from a dark past or any past you come from, like, just be proud of where you are and be proud of who you are and where you come from and keep moving forward. Focus on your craft. Focus on being a better person. You know, I, I'm going to be a great actor one day, but I also want to be a great person one day. Um and I'm gonna be accomplishing that over time. So just keep your mind on that. Law of attraction is a real thing. Mm -hmm. Attract what you want. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, humility. Just never forget where you come from and uh, staying focused, learning to pick yourself back up and just like having that internal dialogue with yourself, the, like a positive internal dialogue um, and just surrounding yourself with good people. Like know how to like gauge the people that just don't, aren't, positive for you and don't aren't serving you anymore um yeah and just working hard focus learn that some sometimes some things will require a sacrifice um but that will be all be worth it in the end 
I think um I think for anybody who, who's who's young or like our age or even older who wants to get in the entertainment industry or just maneuver through life, I think for me the biggest thing has been gratitude, master your mind, and be impatiently patient. Meaning, don't just wait for opportunities to, to come for you. Like create your own opportunities while you're still out there fighting to get the opportunities that you want, and just master your mind, bro. Because the thing, this brain that we have between our two ears is what's what's either ruining your life or pushing you forward. So either get around the right people listen to the right things read the right things just be positive as much as you can and try to vibrate at a high frequency as much as you can and gratitude man if you're at a place where like you were saying you don't have the car that you want be grateful for that car because there's somebody without legs in a wheelchair there's somebody riding the bus there's somebody take having a bike uh taking the bike to work but you have a car if you don't like the place where you're at be grateful you have a, a roof over your over your head, but just be grateful for the things that you want as if you already have them, yeah. and right. then just maneuver your life that way. I I you know I heard this quote by uh, Alex Ramosi. Been listening to the guy, been reading his books. Really uh, really really great guy, man. He's putting out so much knowledge out there for the world. He's got courses for free. He's got books for free on Spotify. He's a great guy, man. But uh, in a time where there's so much going on. If you're starting off, just focus on that one thing. It doesn't take 20 or 30 different things to be great at to make you rich. It only takes one. You only need to be great at one thing and it could change your entire life. And from there, then you can do whatever you want. Um, But I think nowadays, so many people, they're like, oh, I want to do photography. Oh, I want to be a director. Oh, but also like, uh, want to drive cars fast and like, but it's like, dude, just slow down. Pick one thing, try it out, see if you like it. If you don't like it, cool, scratch it. Now you know you don't like it. It's not just about figuring out what you do want to do with your life. It's about figuring out what you don't want to do. Try it out. And the only way by doing that is by trying things out. So I think that's really important for the younger generation who's getting overwhelmed with so much nowadays. It's like, yo, folk, make a list and focus on it. One year could change your life. You got 12 things on your list, focus on one thing per month and, and just go down that list. You know, obviously for us, it's like acting, business, all this stuff. But but for the whoever's watching, whether it's acting or whatever, dial in on that yeah. one thing. Cause that one thing could change your life and and uh, and that's all you need. And, then, and you only have to be right once. Yeah, exactly, You can try exactly, a bunch of bro. things, but exactly. 100 things might not work. But that 101st, that might be the one. And exactly, bro. You got it. Yeah. All right, boys, where can we find you guys? Instagram projects, any of that stuff. Instagram at Ezekiel Pacheco underscore. Same thing for everything else. Um, at the Gates is coming to theaters soon. Um, yeah, I can't wait for that to come out. I can't wait for you guys to see it. I'm going to take over. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Gberto. Um, I have a couple cool things coming out. Um, I don't know if we could talk about them. <laughs> I get so nervous about it, about having to talk about it. You could say them, but you know what I'm saying? I have, a really cool, we yeah. I have a really cool movie coming out next year, and it's produced by some really cool people and um yeah i'm super excited it's something very different than i've ever done so that's amazing yeah you can find me at uh at herbert morales underscore on instagram and all social media platforms and um i'm coming out with the movie in the next month and a half we're gonna start shooting with some really cool producers directors actors and uh business wise business wise as well i got some pretty good stuff coming out too so make sure you stay tuned all right guys well i hope you enjoyed today's episode you know where to find me but uh We spoke a lot about acting. We spoke a lot about the craft and the business side of it. Guys, if you're an aspiring actor out there in the world, please go to thediegotinoco.com slash actors campus and you can literally learn everything about how to start your career as an actor from scratch, from anywhere in the world at whatever age. Highly encourage parents who want their child to to break into acting uh, to join just because there's a lot of detrimental disgusting people in this industry sometimes a lot of great people but uh i want you guys to be safe this is the safest and clearest way that i've that i put out there and created for you guys so uh join check it out and uh i hope to see you guys on a movie set real soon with the four of us hell yeah thank you for having us bro (laughs) fucking legend (laughs) yeah 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 okay okay ready (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) yeah. take it back ready ready (laughs) All right, all right, before we wrap up, I got you guys some gifts. Right, Let's see it. I got yeah. y'all some gifts. Open it in the <laughs> corner. Open it in the corner. Dude, <laughs> Dude yeah. you're funny, bro. Oh, my God. Some sangre mia. Dude.
Uh, look at Thank that, bro. Look at the packaging, fire. bro. This is beautiful, bro. Dude, Thank I know Gilberto already you. has Thank some merch because yes. you know we shot some interesting stuff together and Shout some very cool India. shots, but. But yeah, I hope you guys like it. Winter's kicking in, so I'm keeping you guys cozy. Fire, Fire, this. Thank you. Quality, yeah. <laughs> Quality. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, oh no. Right. We're doing, right. doing unboxing yeah. or what? Can we open is it the same one? No, 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 no. It's okay. It's okay. This is the same one? Because this is the new merch. I don't want the fans oh, to get jealous. Okay, okay, okay. You guys got to wait. To I, I also want to say, too, before we wrap, bro. Yeah. It's inspiring what you're doing that you're not just, sta you're not just staying, you know, the whole how, how the whole world is moving and our industry is moving. You're pivoting. And I think that's a big that's a big thing that people need to do too. Don't just stay stagnant, just pivot. Diego, we all have our own different things going on aside from acting, but you know, he got his clothing line, he's got a podcast, he's doing all these other things. So just pivot. Whenever something stays stagnant, just pivot. Stay curious, pivot. Stay curious, pivot. Yeah. Always stay learn. So, oh, yeah. It's yeah. admirable. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, dude. Let's go play some top golf and let's go. Hey. <laughs> Thank you, Diego. Thank you guys.